Hello. This is a podcast about gossip, dirty laundry, chitter chatter and back fence prittle prattle. In each episode Joe Wilkinson, David Earl and Poppy the Pest Woman invite you lot, the lovely listeners, to send in any juicy gossip you might have heard over the years. At the end of each episode they will choose their favorite bit of gossip and help spread it around the world. So, without further ado, welcome to Gorgeous Millipedes. No. Gherkins Moldy. No. Gary Lanica Masturbates. No. Gossip Mongers. Yes. 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 That's it. Yes. Gossip Mongers. Fantastic. Here we go then. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Gossip number one. Um, hi. This, sorry, this is from Joanna. Hi, I work for a well-known charity who deliver workplace first aid training. I used to work in customer services, and one day we received an email about a member of the public who was banned from attending any of our courses. The email only had his name, which unfortunately I can't remember, but stated if he was to call or email, (laughs) we were under no circumstances allowed to book him onto a course. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Oh, yeah, intrigued. Uh, I searched his name on the database to see why he was banned. Mm-hmm. How could anyone be banned from learning first aid? <laughs> <laughs> it turns out he used to purposely shit himself on courses. <laughs> That sounds what the notes on his account simply said defecates on courses. (laughs) Do not book. (laughs) Speak to manager if necessary. (laughs) Banned for life. (laughs) So basic. Oh god. Apparently it happened around three times. Times. I thought you were going to say 3 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Don't do the afternoon course with him. <laughs> I don't know how the, the teacher or fellow students discovered this, that he pooed himself, whether he told them or just waited for the stench to hit them. It's a mystery. He was a living legend in the department for a time I worked there. Legend. Legend. <laughs> Known simply as that one who pooed on a course. (laughs) I just wish I knew more information. Thank you, Joanna. You're an absolute superstar. The mysterious man who would turn up and shit himself during first aid courses. What did he want? Why did he do it? What was his aim? And where is he now? Tantalizing questions that will never be answered. I bet his name was Jeff. Gossip number two. This is from Anonymous. Hi all. I've recently moved in with my fiance and have noticed her neighbour is a bit strange. I spotted her doing the summertime sitting in her back garden, topless, wearing only her bikini bottoms. She's 76. <laughs> Good I spotted this anomaly due to being able to see directly into her back garden from my partner's bedroom window. What's weirder than the nudity is that she likes to clean her pebbles. <laughs> What's her pebbles? Is it pebbles or is it something else? I don't know. With a hose pipe during the hottest part of the day. <laughs> Clean her pebbles. I'm so intrigued, it's killing me. I'm not sure whether I wish that that was some sort of innuendo, oh, right. but she is in fact she in fact has four crates full of small white pebbles <laughs> that she keeps in her garden shed. 
I could understand if they were washed once a year and used on her flower beds. But this is a weekly occurrence. <laughs> and after they're bonnet. clean, the pebbles are put back in the shed. <laughs> it's really bothering me. Uh, it's bothering me as well. Does anybody else do this? <laughs> No, just topless <laughs> pebble washer. It frightens me how she covers the end of the hose pipe with one finger to make it spray whilst gritting her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> it's just dawned on me that they could be baby skulls. <laughs> <laughs> Is it baby, baby skull? Baby skull. He's, he's right. Let it go, mate. Get on with your day. <laughs> Just look the other way. Pull the curtains. Baby skull. Straight away little, jump into little that. Twist. Oh, God. <laughs> Get your babs out. Get your hose out and start washing those pebbles. Not a greater feeling in the world. Clean pebbles and tanned baps. A lovely afternoon in the garden. Tanned baps. Clean pebbles. Tanned baps. Tanned baps. Clean Gossip number three. Right, this is from Anonymous. Uh, there was a guy in the town where I grew up called Blind Chris. He was and presum presumably is, still is, blind, as his name suggests. The story I heard was that he lost his sight in some kind of tragic accident involving hay bales. But anyway, that isn't the gossip. The gossip is that my mate's grandma reckons he isn't actually blind at all. <laughs> <laughs> Old nosy grandma. <laughs> she runs a news agents and she reckons when he comes into the shop, she can see his <laughs> eyes following all the young girls around. Oh, God. <laughs> it's all an act, according to my nan. If it is, he has gone to fairly extreme lengths because <laughs> he must have lived in the town for 40 plus years. <laughs> He's kept it up the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I think Granny's just a bit of a nosy bitch. <laughs> also, my mate was walking home from the pub one night and saw him fall straight into a big hole. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, that the water company had dug in the road. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, should case, we be laughing? Just in case anyone sees it. Yeah, a bit of I'll, jumping I'll here. I'll prove it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Blind Chris, just getting on with his day. And then along comes the gossipy old nanny, who doesn't trust anyone in her village. Come on nanny, blind Chris is blind. Please come to terms with that nanny. He's fucking blind. Blind Chris is blind. What is your problem? Chris the blind man is blind. Fucking nannies. Gossip number four. Okay, this is from Matt from Manchester. <coughs> Hi, David, Joe and Poppy. A mate of mine used to attend a life drawing class where artists and hobbyists alike would practice drawing human anatomy from a nude model. At one of the lessons, my mate was drawing when something started beading from the model's penis down onto the floor. Too long and stringy to be piss, it was definitely cum. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just came out. <laughs> These medical assistants. What, but he'd be flaccid? Yeah, but what's it just bubbling out? Read on. Okay. Read on. We're about to find <laughs> out. Don't stop there. Oh. Uh, my mate looked around like, I can't be the only one seeing this right. <laughs> 
but everyone was carrying on like nothing was happening. <laughs> They'd seen it all before. We we reckon that the model had knocked one out in the toilets beforehand. Oh my god. God. Scared that he might. Oh, scared that he might have gotten a boner during the class. Exactly what he did. Yeah, definitely. Or that he was trying to make his knob look bigger for the drawings. <laughs> <laughs> I like an insecure model. Yeah. Like you know what? Yeah. Do something else then. Yeah, you don't have to do that. What do you mean? Be a road Fuck sweeper. You know. Either way. Not good money either. <laughs> Is it not, mate? Really not, no. Um, (laughs) Either way, it was fucking rank. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Oh, sure, you're a life model. Why not masturbate it seven minutes before you're about to get your kit off? Yes, that sounds sensible. Bit of advice though, wipe the old knob properly before doing your stint of modeling. Gossip number five. This is from Tom. Uh, I have a bit of gossip concerning the provenance of a much-loved 70s hit song. I was told this gossip by my mum's ex-boyfriend, affectionately known as Bonsoir. (laughs) (laughs) It was the summer of 79 and Bonsoir and his mates (laughs) were enjoying the school holidays by engaging in some... Who's Bonsoir, his mum's ex? Yeah. His mum's ex boyfriend, Bonsoir. Bonsoir. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, amazing. It was the summer of 79, and Bonsoir and his mates were enjoying the school holidays by engaging in some underage drinking at Holm Pierpoint Water Sports Centre in Nottingham. <laughs> <laughs> Bonsoir. Sounds like the place to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst on a raft in the middle of a lake, one of the lads noticed a bottle that appeared to have some paper inside it. Instead of investigating further, they apparently. In- all simultaneously and without any discussion, began to chant, message in a bottle, message in a bottle, message in a bottle. (laughs) This curious incident was soon forgotten as they continued with their lazy summer afternoon on the lake. (laughs) Cut to the evening and the lads had got tickets to see a hot new band, the police, playing at their school. (laughs) (laughs) I looked this part up and despite sounding utter bollocks, they did actually play at the school in 1979. They were enjoying some of the hits when all of a sudden the singer announced that they were about to try out a new song that they <laughs> in that very afternoon. Lo and behold, they then launched into the song Message in a Bottle. <laughs> to this day, Bonsoir <laughs> is convinced that Sting overheard their ch- <laughs> on the lake and is still annoyed that he never received any songwriting royalties. <laughs> Bonsoir. Oh, absolutely Rock. incredible. <laughs> Message in a bottle by Bonsoir. <laughs> Bonsoir. The man who wrote Message in a bottle. You don't believe him. Really? Well, you should. It was one of many big hits that he secretly wrote. Uptown Girl by Billy Joe X. He wrote that. Fiery Starter by The Prodigy. And Rabbit by Chase and Dave. Gossip number six. Celebrity. Ross Nobel. Hello there, this is Ross Nobel here with some showbiz gossip. 
This concerns uh, my mate's mum lives next door to this bloke who had a job incinerating medical waste at the local hospital. And uh, this lad got wind that uh, Arthur Askey, the popular variety comedian, star of stage and screen, was due to come in to be operated on. Um, he found out that due to poor circulation, uh, which had resulted in gangrene, uh, big hearted Arthur, as he was known as, had to have uh, both his legs amputated. So this fella, after the op, faster than you could say, hello playmates, uh, he stole Arthur's legs and pickled them in a fish tank. And to this day, he keeps them in his garage. And for any fans of the glory days of British variety, or just legs in general, uh, he'll show them to you for five pound. Eh, uh, thank you. If you would like to send in a bit of unsubstantiated gossip, then please, email gossipmongers at yahoo.com. All names will be changed to protect the innocent. If you would like to send in a bit of Gossip number seven. Okay. <clears throat> Doesn't say who it's from, this one. Growing up, always dreamed of swimming with dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. As I imagine many of us do. <laughs> this story, however, yes. may change your opinion. <laughs> Of the gentle, of these gentle, kind creatures. <laughs> <laughs> At my uni, there was a girl and two of her friends who headed to Florida to swim with dolphins and tick it off their bucket list. <laughs> Little did they know what lay ahead. <laughs> Towards the end of the experience, the girls were waiting for the dolphin to carry them across the lagoon <laughs> when things took a sinister turn. <laughs> oh, God. Two of the friends safely made it back, mm. but one unfortunately caught the dolphin's eye. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> he <laughs> definitely wanted a piece Fuck. and started dunking her. <laughs> Fins on that? shoulders... <laughs> Mounting her from behind. Fucking hell. She was being bobbed up and down. <laughs> and then oh. saw a giant pink dolphin dick appear <laughs> from under the water. <laughs> oh, God. The dolphin dick started jabbing her. Oh, God, jabbing. It knew where to go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the two oh, rejected girls then raised the alarm and the victim was rescued by staff. <laughs> oh, On the way out, the caretaker. <laughs> Len. Len came in with a stick. On the way out, the victim took one look. On the way out, the victim took one last look at her admirer to see him eyeballing her. <laughs> and she swears. She saw him wink. <laughs> and click. <laughs> no word of a lie. The girl is still in therapy. Hashtag dolphin dick. <laughs> That's our first hashtag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, God, funny. I don't know what I'm laughing at there. <laughs> hashtag. 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 H hashtag. Dolphin dick. Dolph hashtag. Hash hashtag. H hashtag. Ha Dolphin dick. Dolphin dick. Hashtag. Hashtag. Dolphin dick. Yeah. 
Hash Dolphin Dick. Dolphin Dick. Gossip number eight. This is from Robert. Uh, growing up, one of my best mates went to an all boys high school. I was always jealous of his stories, and one in particular stays with me to this day. During a philosophy lesson, my mate was handed a note from a cl fellow classmate Ground floor toilets, go now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, go on. We've all sat <laughs> up. <laughs> we were slouching uh, a little. But <laughs> when the bell rang, the entire class fled out <laughs> down to the ground floor toilets. When he got there, there was a huge queue for the gents. In typically British fashion, a line of very excitable lads <laughs> snaked around the ground floor toilet entrance to the library, which was at least a block away. They waited patiently to, to get a good look at what was in there. All people could hear from the front of the queue was, oh, my God. <laughs> and wow. <laughs> An unbelievable lad. <laughs> and at the front stood a boy. His name was Ben Rossiter, <laughs> who had done what one lad described as the biggest human shit of all time. Wow. Ben Rossiter stood there, proud as punch. <laughs> no <laughs> like an artist next to his work. <laughs> Nodding to everyone's exclamations as they passed. My, my, my mate said... It was as large as a full-size rugby ball. <laughs> Complete dome with no breakage. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, everyone who does a large log claims it as a Rossiter. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> I've never met Ben Rossiter, but I feel very privileged to have been told this story. A hero. Who will always be remembered as the boy who shat a turd the size of a rugby ball. Stunning achievement from one so young. Rossiter. 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 Just done a great big fat Rossiter. Gossip number nine. Uh, this is from Dave Bolton. Hi, Joe, Dave and Poppy. Back in the early 70s in the north of England, a load of kids opened their Mr. Spock Action Man dolls on Christmas Day, <laughs> only to find their Mr. Spock didn't have a nose. <laughs> <laughs> That's because my mum, Diane, got her first job after secondary school at a toy factory production line <laughs> where she had to check every Mr. Spock was in a fit state to go on sale. <laughs> My mum, being bored as fuck with her job, <laughs> bit the nose off every Mr. Spock that passed on the conveyor <laughs> belt. Your mum's <laughs> off her fucking rocker. It's <laughs> passed inspection and was packaged appropriately ready for shipment. <laughs> it says it's entitled My Mum and Spock's Nose. <laughs> That's amazing. Bonus gossip, her brother Michael had a job at Rat Bones, the bread bakers, <laughs> and every so often would flick a meaty bogey into the huge no. dough machine. Gross. Gross. I remember Gross. being about seven or eight and making a jam butty and my mum telling me to check the bread for lumps. <laughs> <laughs> you savage. <laughs> 
middle-aged woman, bored as buggery, sat in some factory somewhere in Britain, secretly biting the noses of her few Spock dolls. One by one. Imagine watching her do this without her knowing. Think of how you would feel looking at this woman. As she does it. I would have reported her. Without a shadow of a doubt. Live long and prosper. Image of Serac. Father of all women now hold true. As I turned, and my eyes beheld you, I displayed emotion. I beg forgiveness. Joe Pulpy and David will now choose their favorite rumor. Okay, here's the top five of this episode. Number one is the world's biggest dump. <laughs> <laughs> Number oh. two is Bonsoir wrote <laughs> message in a bottle. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, sorry. Don't need to hear the rest. Uh, Number three is dolphin dick. Oh, oh yeah, yeah actually. Dick. Number four is white pebble cleaning. <laughs> mm, that's good. And number five is first aider shitting. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, my God. There's three there, though. Mm. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> world's biggest dump. <laughs> Bonsoir wrote a message in a bottle. Dolphin dick, white pebble cleaning, and first aid shitter. I'm sticking with Bonsoir. I think Bonsoir as well. What do you reckon? Uh, yeah. On other days, a couple of those other ones could have won. Yeah. I think bon the fact that it's bonsoir so... Was it's so you're going for Bonsoir? Yeah. I think you're a little bit disappointed. No, you? not at all. No. You it sounded like you wanted I don't know, really. You wanted... A, you wanted um, it wasn't a standout. You don't think Bonsoir was? No, well, that's absolutely fine. Oh, blah, we've never had this sort of discussion. <laughs> well, um... <laughs> No, no, go for it. Do what you want. <laughs> Fucking hell. No, there isn't any there. Uh, no, no. Was be... then... I mean, oh. there's Blind Chris. Who's Blind Chris? Oh, it's Nan. Chris. Yeah, he's but he didn't make the top five, so he was relevant. It's a good uh, bunch. Right, there. Bonsoir wrote Message in a Bottle. Should I do... you sure? Yeah. Oh, well, there seems to be some... There's no, no one, not no at all. No, 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 no. no, no. There's a what passive the... aggressive... No, no, yeah, no. No, I was literally thinking there's nothing else that... What was the top five again? <laughs> Put, okay. Well, the top five is to... world's biggest dump. Okay. What was bad? Bonsoir, Bonsoir wrote message in a bottle. Yeah. Dolphin dick. Yeah. White pebble cleaning and first aid shitting. First aid shitting is was very well written. Yeah. I feel like the pebble one, we laughed a lot, but maybe not as much as. Yeah. Bonsoir, wow. I think, just has has a cracking little story at the heart of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna put my foot down, guys. Actually. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it then. Right. Right. Over the window. What's, what's the crowd like out today? Mm, quieter. Quieter. Oh, what's the show? <laughs> Podcast is failing then. <laughs> uh, mm. Where to begin? <laughs> to um, totally forgotten it, haven't you? Someone's mum's ex-boyfriend was called Bonsoir. <laughs> Nicknamed Bonsoir. <laughs> and Bonsoir uh, said that he was um, having a drink with his friends when they were younger and they found a message in a bottle. <laughs> On a lake in Nottingham. On a lake in By the Nottingham. Leisure Centre, I think. Next door to the Leisure Centre. Uh, <laughs> next door to the Leisure Centre. <laughs> um, uh, um, yeah, so they saw it and started going, message in a bottle, message in a bottle. God, um, you sound like a robot. <laughs> message in a bottle, message in a bottle. <laughs> Bloody effort in, you're shouting down at 40, Sorry. 35 people. Well, um, then Sting must have heard, <laughs> because that night... They said, we've got a brand new song we just wrote this afternoon. It's called Message in a Bottle. The end. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Window closed. Uh, oh, well, good fun. Good. That was yeah. good fun. Yeah. Oh, Great. Good episode, good guys. Good and, yeah. Thanks yeah. for writing in, everyone. And yeah. Uh, yeah. as we say on the podcast. Oh. Uh, from us all at Gossip Munger. <laughs> <laughs> Gossip Munger. We, uh, <laughs> we, uh, um, we, so we bid you farewell. Well. We, we bid you we good bid night. You. <laughs> uh, goodbye. Oh, good morning. Bye. 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 Bye.
thank you for listening to this podcast. Remember, if you have any juicy gossip then you know where to send it. Gossipmongers at yahoo.com Until the next time, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Bye. Have a good